it represents the <coughs> cognitive network. Uh, in cognitive network, we have a base station called CBS and uh, a secondary user. So we assume that uh, the CBS has M antenna. Each car user contain an antenna, and uh, the primary user and the primary base station has uh, have only one antenna. So we assume here that uh, the number of antenna is uh, neglected uh, to k. So in our work, uh, we consider the downlink uh, transmission and the frequency division triplexing mode, the FDD mode. So the received signal at the prime user is given uh, by this equation, and also the received signal at the kth secondary user is given by this equation. We assume in our work that uh, equal power allocation uh, scheme is uh, used for the secondary users. For assumption, <coughs> we assume that the CBS has an imperfect CRC of the interference link which, uh, which, which is the channel between the CBS and the primary user. And also we assume that uh, the CBS has only partial uh, channel knowledge about the secondary links. Uh, we call by the secondary links the channel between uh, CBS and the secondary users. We assume also that the primary user tolerates a level of beam beamforming outage uh, denoted C. We define by beamforming outages uh, outage an outage occurs if the interference caused to the primary user uh, is higher than the predefined threshold. <coughs> so our objective is to propose an efficient scheduling algorithm of the secondary users. Uh, we should uh, reduce the amount of required feedback, feedback excuse me, <coughs> and also uh, we have to minimize the interference caused to the primary user, and finally, we have to maximize the throughput of the secondary system. So to do so, we propose a scheduling method based on a processing beamforming. Uh, our proposed method is uh, <coughs> divided into steps. In the first steps, what we call multiple article beam generation, so the CBS uh, will generate, <coughs> generate, excuse me, the beamforming matrix uh, consisting of NS orthogonal beam. Uh, NS here is uh, <coughs> higher than one and uh, less than M minus one. Uh, the idea is to uh, generate uh, beams in order to avoid the direction of the primary user in the objective of to limit interference caused to the primary user. So we assume here that, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the that the CBS has a perfect estimate of the channel denoted HPU. Uh, here, uh, the estimated contain an error. The, so E denotes the channel estimation vector error. Uh, we suppose that uh, <coughs> the entries of E are uh, AED zero mean complex Gaussian with uh, variance denoted sigma square uh, sigma E square. Then, the, uh, based on this estimation, the uh, CBS will generate <coughs> appropriate beamforming weight in order to minimize interference to the primary user. So, uh, <coughs> the mean of interference caused by uh, matrix is given by this equation. So in order to minimize uh, this uh, interference caused to the primary user, the CBS uh, will generate uh, a beam that uh, satisfies this condition. So the, be the beam are orthogonal, each beam are orthogonal to others, and the, the beam are orthogonal to the estimate of the channel. <coughs> so, uh, notice that when uh, the interference constraint is low or the, the estimation error is high, the probability of not satisfying the interference constraint 
increase, which leading the, uh, to uh, beforming outage. So we assume here that the primary user tolerates a level of outage, denoted XC, uh, and we propose to optimize the number of uh, generated beam, denoted NS, to obtain this level. So we derive uh, the expression of uh, primary, uh, of, excuse me, of uh, probability of outage, uh, mentioned here by this expression, where uh, is the is gamma lower and complete gamma function. <coughs> so the choice of NS, uh, as uh, we, uh, I mentioned, it, uh, we aim here to find the value of NS that the system has to set just as the beamforming outage probability does not exceed a, brief, a predefined three shot XC tolerated by the primary user. So uh, we derive the expression and we find uh, that NS should satisfy this condition. Uh, we can give here an example. Uh, for uh, <coughs> variance of error uh, minus uh, 13 dBm and uh, the interface consists equal to zero dBm and uh, a given uh, tolerable <coughs> outage probability uh, 1%, and uh, the power of the each second user equal to 3 dBm, the maximum value of uh, generated beam NS is equal to 3. Move to, uh, to the second step of our uh, proposed scheme. So the, in the first, scheme, uh, first uh, step of our uh, proposed scheme, the CPS generates uh, a beamforming matrix. So in the second step, the CBS will schedule uh, the secondary user. So uh, in this step, the CBS uh, selects a set of uh, NS secondary user or antennas by applying the opportunistic beamforming. So the, uh, the CBS starts by transmitting the beam generated in the first step to all secondary user. Uh, <coughs> As we, I mentioned at uh, the top of presentation, each uh, second user has multiple antenna. So here we consider three cases. In the first cases, we treat each secondary receive antenna as an, an independent user. So each secondary user will calculate the following N, uh, N and us, uh, CNR for each antenna N. So uh, each secondary user should feedback and maximum SNR corresponding to each receive antenna. And then s the CBS schedules transmission to the NS antenna with the highest SNR and assign to each of this antenna the beam corresponding to the highest SNR. <coughs> the second case uh, that we consider, uh, each user only feedbacks the largest SNR. So each uh, user only feedback the largest SNR value observed of all receiving antenna and the associate uh, index beam. Then the CBS schedule transmission to the NS uh, uh, users corresponding to the higher, highest uh, SNR. Notice here that in, in the second case, the total amount of the system uh, feedback, it reduced from key N SNR value to K SNR value and the corresponding beam and this is. So here the second case, reduce the feedback, the amount of feedback. In the third case, we consider uh, what we call the linear MMSE receiver. So <coughs> in the previous cases, uh, the SNR is measured at individual antenna level. Here, we consider the optimal combining based on MMSE criteria. So the SNR uh, obtained using the MMSE criterion is given by this equation. So each user only feedback the SNR seen across beam after uh, optimal combining and the associate and DIX beam. Then the CBS schedules transmission to the NS user corresponding to the highest SNR. So uh, the idea here to uh, use the linear MMSE is to increase the throughput of the system, 
the secondary system. Also, in our schema, we have used the uh, uh, threshold mechanism in order to further reduce the uh, amount of feedback. So as the number of secondary user grows, the amount of feedback also grows. In order to further so to reduce the amount of feedback, we propose to uh, use a scheduling mechanism as I mentioned. So a user does not need to feedback when it is its maximum SNR value is below a threshold denoted by gamma th. <coughs> so here I will give the simulation results. Here we consider uh, the probability of beforming outage versus the uh, estimation error and the interference constraint for uh, a number of uh, antenna at the CBS equal to five and different value of uh, number uh, uh, NS and the power of the secondary user. As we see here on the <coughs> first figure that uh, the beamforming outage uh, decrease when <coughs> Uh, uh, the interference uh, constraint also, uh, so the beforming outage increase as the interference constraint decrease. In the figure, uh, the right figure, uh, the beforming outage <coughs> increase as the, the error, uh, the estimation error uh, increase. In the next figure, we show the sum rate versus the number of secondary user. Uh, here, we uh, plot the three cases. What she mentioned, what she mentioned uh, here uh, by uh, solid curve represent uh, w w the case where we have not uh, utilized the mechanism, the threshold mechanism. What is uh, presented here in the dotted curve represent the when we have we uh, have a uh, three shot. So, the first remark that uh, in this figure that the sum rate, the throughput, the total throughput of the system increase when the total number of the secondary user increase, and this uh, can be explained by as the <coughs> the multi-user diversity increases. And uh, this is the benefit uh, of uh, the use of opportunistic beforming. The second remark is that uh, we have a neglected uh, gain uh, between the, in terms of uh, throughput, between the two first cases. Uh, and we have a great uh, increase in terms of throughput in the third cases as uh, expected. Uh, finally, we can remark also that uh, the loss due to the threshold mechanism decreases when the uh, number of secondary user also increases. So I conclude by conclusion. Uh, finally, the conclusion. So in this work, we considered a uh, MIMO cognitive radio network, which consists uh, on, <coughs> on cognitive radio system, a network, and uh, which co coexists with a primary network. We assume it here that the CBS not, uh, don't, don't have the full channel state information from secondary user, and uh, the CBS has an imperfect, an imperfect channel uh, knowledge from the primary user. We propose a two-phase scheduling algorithm based on opportunistic move forming. Our scheme uh, satisfies the constraint of tolerable interference to primary user and also maximize the throughput of the secondary system. Uh, so generated beam are orthogonal to the estimate of the interference link as I mentioned. So we considered the three cases. Uh, the two first uh, cases, uh, the two strategy of feedback according in fact that we treat an antenna as a user or not. The third case, we consider the optimal uh, linear uh, combining MMSE. 
And finally, we uh, use a uh, shield mechanism in order to, to further reduce the amount of feedback. That's all, thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Aben, for sharing with us these uh, interesting, innovative uh, research results. Maybe let's move to the question and answer session. Yes, please. Thank you for your uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, so uh, in your uh, opportunistic beam forming schemes, the user have to, has to estimate the signal pla uh, to interference plus noise ratio yes. and feed it to the uh, transmitter. Yes. So what I would like to know is uh, uh, which kind of interference do you consider? Do you take into account uh, uh, the interference, the inter-symbol interference from the same user or uh, multiplexes interference from other users? Now here we consider as uh, just the interference here from the secondary, uh, the other secondary user, users, yeah, yeah. and the interference from the primary user. Okay. And uh, regarding the, the feedback channel, Yes. You assume that is uh, error free or error free? Yes. Error free. Error free. Yes. Uh, what happens if there is errors? Uh, so the error we will consider the delays and uh, maybe we have to study this. Okay. Okay. The future. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the the last question is uh, about the complexity of uh, MMSC. A minimum mean squared error. Yes. Uh, do you propose at the final of your presentation as mm. a solution? Uh, so, what about the complexity if the the number of users uh, increase? Yes. Increase? Uh, uh, we have mentioned this in the paper. The, so, we have an increase uh, in terms of the throughput at the cost of the complexity of the receiver. Mm. So, we have to pay the cost of the complexity. There is other solutions. Uh, I don't know. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, so in your work, you are proposing a joint uh, solution for underlay my cognitive radio connect workers. And just to say that I'm not good in that field, but I have a remark. So in your work, you don't consider, or maybe you don't have enough knowledge about your channel, it's okay? So I think that, uh, that it have an, uh, maybe it have an impact, it has an impact in your uh, solution. But uh, what if you consider, or maybe you will deploy uh, methods in order to predict or to detect the channel statue when it is up, or maybe there is uh, 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 with a high uh, uh, signal noise rate or something like that. You will not study the whole channel quality, but just when there is any change in your channel. Maybe it will give you more information about uh, the channel. Okay, and maybe it will uh, enhance the, the performance of your solution. Just, it is a simple remark here, but I'm not really uh, so good in that field. Just, uh, you are talking about the interference channel or the channel of uh, secondary users? So here I'm talking about uh, the channel of uh, when a secondary user will uh, uh, want to uh, to uh, communicate or something like that, maybe. So the uh, secondary channel. Is yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, other question, please. If there is no question, maybe I will ask one. Since I am curious to know, uh, from practical point of view, yes. if you would like to implement this algorithm, as far as I know, you need to estimate the channels between all the secondary users. The channel, you need to compute the SNER, am I right? Yes. In, in, this, uh, in your slide number 15, one five, you need to compute the SNER, yes. which is depends of the channel HKN, the yes. channels between all the secondary users and the 
uh, the, uh, uh, the transmitter. How practical is this, uh, how feasible, how practical is, th is this uh, computation? Uh, yes, uh, in our work we keep the same assumption in the original work of uh, opportunistic performing, uh, in which uh, we assume that uh, each user have the perfect knowledge of the HQN. Uh, we have suggested to uh, further to study the case when just the each secondary user have an estimate of the assignment. So this is another uh, future X. Excellent, thank you. In slide also 21, you present the sum rate and it depends on uh, the threshold, which is zero dBm. Yes. The, the, uh, the threshold TH. ITH, the stress hold is to compute the outage probability, am I right? Uh, the pr the, uh, to compute the number of secondary users that will be scheduled, NS. The, the out how do you f define the outage probability first? The outage probability is the uh, when yeah. the, the interference concept to the primary user uh, is uh, for uh, Greater than the interference the, the uh, temperature. The threshold. Yes. And uh, then the, s the sum uh, capacity depends on this particular threshold, ETH. Uh, in terms of the power. In terms of power. Look, we start by fixing the power, and we have the here, in this expression. We have to choose the number of second users that will be schedule it, or in, or in the other meaning, the number of beam we are active. And then you compute the sum capacity of these particular NS users? Yes. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Then, uh, then you choose the, the, the gamma threshold, the threshold for uh, the feedback, 1.5, whether the E threshold is zero dBm. Uh, yes. I misunderstand the problem. Th that means you choose all the uh, the users that have uh, uh, received sig received signal strength indicator larger than zero dBm. Am I right? No, the, the zero dBm that represents the interference concept to the primary user, and the uh, gamma T hash is the uh, threshold of the SNA. Okay, okay. That is the same thing. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for, uh, uh, let's thank the presenter for his quality, <laughs> high quality presentation. Thank you. Maybe let's move to the next presentation by uh, Iman Sahnoun. Uh, the paper entitled Join Adaptive Modulation and Cooperative for uh, Throughput Enhancement in Cognitive Networks. Uh, Iman Sahnoun is uh, an active researcher at uh, Mediatron Laboratory from uh, SIPCOM. She is working on uh, cognitive cooperation, cooperative radio networks. So please go ahead. So thank you. I'm pleased today to present my work entitled Joint Adaptive Modulation and Cooperation for Throughput Enhancement in Cognitive Network, which is with, uh, with Mrs. Ines Kamoun and Mr. Mohamed Siela. It's known that cognitive radio network consists of primary users licensed to the spectrum and secondary users which access the spectrum without causing harmful interference to the primary users. Especially, spectrum sharing protocols, in other words, the underlay protocol, avoids costly spectrum sensing techniques. In such network, the throughput is one of the biggest challenge. So, how, how can we protect the primary user conversations and at the same time, how to improve secondary netwo uh, network performance? And what is the contribution of our system in terms of throughput? To answer these questions, we'll begin to introduce the system model, 
Then we present a formula for the constraint imposed on secondary, uh, secondary users. Then we'll present uh, uh, the technique of adaptive modulation, then uh, the simulation results, and finally a conclusion and some perspective. Uh, some, per some perspective. Let's begin with the, the system model. Here we have uh, a primary base station, a secondary user, a secondary base station, and eventually uh, a relay. All channels between terminals are, are assumed to be relay and slow fading channels. The noise terms are additive wide Gaussian with a common variance. The distance between primary and secondary base stations is fixed. Here, uh, we are studying the path. Um, we, we are we we are considering the path loss and the shadowing effect. The sh the shadowing effect is here correlated. The principle is, if the interference cost generated by the secondary user is still below a predefined threshold, the secondary user can transmit directly to the second, uh, secondary destination. Otherwise, he will try to have recourse to cooperative techniques. This, uh, these cooperative techniques uh, are the non-regenerative amplify and forward, and the, the space-time coding protocols based on Alamuti ST codes. Let's introduce briefly, briefly these two uh, protocols. Uh, the cooperation based on amplify and forward protocols. The received signals at the destination will be as follow, with gamma is, is the amplification factor, and we assume that uh, the secondary and the relay energy are equal to the, over, uh, the half of the overall uh, available energy. Then the destination will combine uh, these two signals uh, with the, the maximum ratio combining and the output uh, signal, to, uh, noise to, uh, signal to noise ratio will be as follow. For the Alamuchi ST code, in such protocol we are uh, we will require uh, four channels to send two samples. At the first uh, phase of cooperation, the secondary user will send uh, the first uh, samples, that means A1 and minus A2 conjugate, and the relay and the secondary base station listen. In the second uh, cooperation phase, the relay uh, um, send the amplified uh, received version, and the secondary user will send the two last samples. The destination then combine uh, the two signals received from the direct and the indirect links, uh, and we find here the total uh, signal to nose ratio. So, for the constraint imposed on secondary users, we have here the expression of the cost in non-cooperative case caused uh, by the secondary user's transmission. Here we have the cost expression when using the amplify and forward protocol. During the first fa phase, uh, uh, the, secondary uh, the secondary users will cause the C1 cost. And during the second phase, the relay, the relay um, will cause this cost C2. Uh, the overall cost will be the maximum of these two uh, costs generated by the relay and the source transmissions. For the Alamoti protocol, in the first phase, we have only the source that uh, which transmits. So we have C1. And during the second phase, we have both the source and the relay which transmit. So we have the sum of these two costs. The overall cost will be also the maximum of these two expression, which is C2. <coughs> uh, to enhance more the throughput of the system, we will use here the adaptive modulation. In such technique, the transmitter changes its constellation size based on the instantaneous received signal to noise race ratio to decide for the constellation size of the next transmitted frame. Here, 
uh, we use a strategy based on maximization, uh, maximizing throughput that is presented and detailed in a previous work. The corresponding table is as follows of the decision. The last part of this presentation is the simulation results. For simulation results, we use a pathless exponent of alpha is equal to four, a shadowing correlation coefficient between channels. Beta is 0.5. The SU uh, secondary user is located at the center of the line connecting the two base stations. Here, uh, we show the throughput behavior uh, as a uh, for several relay position. Um, this figure shows that uh, the throughput decreases sharply when uh, increasing the, uh, the energy, the transmission en energy, since uh, the secondary user uh, will uh, be more and more not authorized to, to transmit. For the second figure, uh, we have compared the, the, the two schemas. Uh, with, uh, without cooperation, cooperation with Amplify and Forward, and cooperation with Alamochi uh, uh, AF. Here uh, we show that uh, the proposed uh, protocols outperform the classical one that is without cooperation. <coughs> uh, to, um, for more uh, general view, we consider then a rectangular pattern where the, where the uh, secondary base station is, lo is located at the middle and the relay uh, is varying along all the cell. Here, uh, we depict that the throughput becomes beta at relay location close to the secondary base station. Here is another figure with uh, a different uh, ener transmission energy. So, uh, once again, uh, the worst performance are, um, are shown in the uh, relay posi position close to primary base station. Next, we would like to study the effect of detecting one, uh, more than one primary base station in the network. So, uh, we consider the following uh, conf uh, configuration, and the resulting uh, throughput is as follows. So, we uh, depict from this, these figures that when increasing the number of uh, primary base stations, the throughput decreases significantly. <coughs> As a conclusion, we, we can say that an adaptive modulation and a cooperation technique are proposed to increase unlicensed user throughputs without increasing the interference caused to primary base stations. Both Amplify and Forward and Alamoti ST code show a significant performance improvement in terms of throughput. Also, from figures, we, uh, must, uh, we, we, we can say that the system throughput is proportional to several parameters, such as uh, the maximum allowed cost, uh, the, uh, the relay location, uh, the transmission energy's value, and also the number of detected primary base stations. As a perspective, uh, we, we can consider energy optimization uh, schema for source and relay nodes to maximize the uh, throughput under the system constraints. Thank you for your attention. Well, well thank you, Simon, for sharing with us this interesting research uh, results and innovation. Maybe let's move for the question and answer session. Yes, Sophia. Thank you for this uh, presentation. I have uh, two questions. The first one is, uh, what about uh, mobility? The performance of uh, your uh, uh, work in high uh, mobility. Are you studying this mobility? Mobility of which node? Of uh, the first uh, user, but... Uh, in case w when you we have uh, high mobility, the uh, of the secondary user, primary user, uh, primary if uh, the if the primary user is 
Uh, mm. no, with her. Uh, um, as we see, uh, there is uh, many parameters, and uh, we must uh, fix it someone to can uh, to 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 to, uh, to can present uh, the throughput and so on. So here, for example, in such uh, figure, we are uh, mo uh, varying the position of relay. We can also varying the position of primary uh, base station. But we must fix it any uh, one uh, can you one give us nodes. Can you give us an idea of uh, the speed of the mobile considering in this uh, works? No, here the, 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 the all nodes are fixed. Only here, only the relay is uh, is uh, varying along the cell. Uh, but I at each point, it's uh, it is fixed. Uh, his his posi position is fixed. That uh, you consider that the f first user is not mobile. Yeah, it's at uh, the middle of line uh, uh, connecting the two uh, base stations. Thanks. The second uh, question is uh, about the number of the secondary user. But uh, if this number is increased or decreased, or well, an, uh, yeah. another if, scenario. If this, if this number uh, de de decreases, mm -hmm. so the, the cost function will uh, must uh, t take care about this uh, the, the overall interference of uh, the, the other secondary users. The secondary, uh, the, uh, the cost function will be uh, will be different from uh, this one. So, uh, at, but at this work, we uh, we study only one secondary based uh, one, one secondary users. Thank oh. you. Yeah. Thank you for your for your talk. Um, my question is, uh, is about slide eight. Uh, so, what is the reason for using maximum ratio combining to combine different signals from different uh, links? So, to 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 uh, to increase the diverse the diver diversity gain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there is no other methods. Uh, that outperform uh, MRC? Yeah, uh, yeah, there is uh, other method. The, the, the destination can uh, consider only the uh, the signals ca uh, that come from the under uh, the indirect link from the relay, for example. But to uh, increase the diversity gain, we can uh, combine these two do these for the direct and the indirect. Okay, you can use, um, for example, I suggest. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a suggestion. Yeah to use uh, IRC, interference rejection combining. I think uh, it outperforms uh, MRC uh, significantly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, maybe in the and, future. Um, concatenation combining too. Concatenation combining uh -huh. could also uh, outperform MRC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, so what about uh, um, um, Decode and forward mm -hmm. approach. Have you uh, any idea on decode yeah. and forward? Because uh, um, perhaps you I choose I choose the amplify and forward because uh, it's more simple. The decode and forward, as we know that uh, the the relay must decode the signal uh, before uh, forwarding uh, it to the destination. And uh, but the in the amplify and forward. Uh, the relay only imp amplify the signal, no, uh, so it's more Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the questions? Actually, the results are so important that I am curious uh, to know uh, more about the throughput. The throughput reaches a maximum, mm -hmm. then it decreases in your uh, slide number 18. So, can you please give uh, us more insights about this maximum in throughput? So, uh, 
uh, more the energy uh, increase, we have uh, throughput increase. It's logically for the for for the first uh, part of the of the curve. Then uh, throw uh, then uh, the throughput at at at, at uh, maximum uh, with an optimal energy uh, of the secondary users. Then. Uh, 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 no, uh, Au-delà de cette de cette valeur, donc ouais, bien, bien, this uh, this uh, this value, uh, the SU will not uh, authorize to transmit, so uh, we will not it it it, it not transmit this. Uh, we, we will not uh, authorize to transmit, so the throughput will uh, dec decrease. Yes, you plot the throughput as a function of the received. SNR, as far as I understood, because you take into account the distance D as well as the path loss exponent alpha. Mm -hmm. So what are you varying? Is the uh, SNR EB over N0 or the EB over N0 is fixed and you are varying the distance D? No, no, uh, we, uh, I'm varying the, the energy. This distance is fixed. She, uh, she is uh, varying EA. For normalization. G and G zero are fixed. This uh, ratio is fixed. I see, I see. If so the energy, uh, if we increase the energy, the cost will uh, also be increased. So we, uh, um, we will not authorize to transmit. <coughs> okay, uh, thank you. Any more question? If no questions, then uh, let's thank the candidate for her, uh, let's thank this uh, man for her high quality presentation. Let's move to the third presentation by Jihan uh, Thabit. Uh, the paper uh, is entitled New Reconfigurable Architecture for Multi-Standard GNSS Subsampling Receiver. So Jihan Thabit is uh, an active researcher at Griscom Laboratory in Supcom. She, she got her engineering degree as well as master degree from Supcom. She is working on multi-standard GNSS receiver, ensuring the continuity between indoor and outdoor communications. Yes, please go ahead. You have 20 minutes of uh, presentation. Uh, hi, everybody. My paper is titled A New Reconfigurable Architecture for Universal GNSS Subsampling Re Receiver. It is prepared by me, uh, Madame Rim Barak, and Monsieur Adler Zell uh, in Grescom Laboratory of Higher School of Communication. Uh, the outline of the presentation uh, will uh, start, I will start with the context of my paper, then I will present uh, G uh, GNSS signal specification, uh, and the third part I will uh, introduce the new GNSS uh, reconfigurable uh, subsampling architecture, which will be uh, validated through simulation in the, second, uh, in the fourth part, and I will finish by a conclusion. Uh, the, uh, the positioning system are uh, integrated into uh, multiple systems such as mobile phones, uh, vehicles. 
Uh, there is uh, four uh, GNSS signal, G global navigation satellite system that are uh, already uh, under op um, operational or will be operational in the next few years. Uh, we have the GPS, the European uh, system, Galileo, uh, GPS, sorry, the uh, American system, Galileo, the uh, European one, GLONASS, the Russian one, and COMPASS. Uh, these systems uh, are interoperable, which is uh, with uh, with each other and uh, will be gathered together to enhance uh, the, uh, the position. Uh, thus, the necessity to have a multi-standard receiver capable to uh, receive all uh, GNSS signals. I will start by uh, the presenting the GNSS signal specification. Uh, all GNSS signals present uh, 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 present uh, civilian and non-civilian application. Here are all the specification of uh, uh, civilian uh, signals. We have uh, three signals for GPS, three for Galileo, uh, two for GLONASS, and three for COMPASS. Uh, different modulation are used for each uh, uh, signal, uh, such as CDMA for uh, GPS, Galileo, and C COMPASS, while GLONASS is using FDMA. Here is the spectrum of uh, GNSS, all GNSS signal for civilian and non-civilian application. Um, the, uh, the new GNSS reconfigurable architecture is based on subsampling and it is composed by wideband ante antenna capable to receive all uh, GNSS signal. Uh, then a cascaded LNA uh, are used to, uh, uh, to enhance the gain. Uh, after that, a okay, um, uh, parallel uh, filter uh, switched by um, uh, on-off, um, uh, controlled by uh, an on-off switchers uh, that will be uh, specified in the next section are used. For, uh, this filter, uh, uh, the filtered signals pass then to the ADC with a high speed track and hold to subsample the signal. Then a digital signal pr processing is used to, uh, for down conversion, uh, demodulation, and decoding. For the five uh, bandpass filter, uh, as uh, we have seen in uh, this uh, spectrum, we have some closed, uh, uh, we have closed uh, signals for each band. Uh, for example, L1. Uh, for example, L1. For example, L1 for L1, E1, and uh, uh, L5, uh, E5, uh, L5, E5. Uh, then we define it five uh, five bandpass filter for uh, which uh, group each uh, closed section. Here is the response of the fifth five bandpass filter and the uh, the uh, authorized uh, signals for each filter. Here, the specification of the five filter and the authorized GSS signal. Uh, as the, uh, the new architecture is based on subsampling, uh, we know that uh, uh, multi-band subsampling to, uh, to, uh, to uh, the, f the intermediate frequency for each uh, s uh, signal is given by uh, FEF. Uh, this is the question. Uh, we have a first condition to note to avoid the uh, aliasing between uh, the signal and its image, uh, which is uh, this condition, and uh, to avoid the uh, aliasing between signals, another condition must be uh, added. And this is the spectrum of uh, uh, input uh, multi, uh, multi band uh, input signal and uh, its uh, spectrum after subsampling. Uh, to enhance the uh, to enhance the uh, uh, subsampling, an algorithm was being uh, implemented to uh, to uh, add guard bands. These guard bands depend on the filter specific uh, specification, and the question of the bar guard band for each uh, signal is given by these equations. To validate uh, this architecture, multiple scenarios are tested. Uh, uh, as we can see in this table, we have filter four uh, always exists. In fact, filter four, in filter four, four, four we have uh, L1 signals, which is the first GNSS employed signal, and uh, this signal uh, is mandatory and will be always is supposed to be uh, always uh, exist. 
And then, uh, uh, then we can see uh, the variance of the uh, subsampling frequency while activating one filter. We have the subsampling frequency 43. And if we activate all filters, we have uh, the subsampling frequency 443. Then the, the subsampling frequency is multiplied by 10. We, choose, uh, we, cho we have chosen uh, the scenario 8 to be validated uh, uh, through, uh, through IDS. We have the, uh, and using the, um, the subsampling frequency already computed, which is 221. Here is the input spectrum, and here is the output spectrum after subsampling using the uh, uh, calculated uh, subsampling frequency. As we can see, we have s seven uh, signals at the input, and we can, uh, we ha we can see uh, the seven uh, uh, signals after subsampling without uh, uh, elasing. To validate this, uh, the whole system, we uh, used uh, the uh, serial search acquisition alg algorithm, which architecture is, uh, uh, is described in this figure. And we uh, associated um, uh, to, each uh, sign uh, to each signal, uh, GNSS signal, uh, a PRN code. And we, uh, we tested the uh, serial search algorithm. Here is uh, the correlation for uh, GPS signal. Uh, we can see the correlation for the three GPS signal, L1, L2, and L5. And uh, we tested also the, uh, the, uh, uh, the correlation for GPS signal. As conclusion, we have introduced a new reconfigurable architecture for multiband GNSS receiver based on subsampling. Uh, this uh, subsampling process is preceded by a bank of five NTE LASIK filters uh, controlled by on off switches. Uh, the proposed architecture is validated, was validated through simulation of multiple scenarios. Uh, uh, and uh, we can see that the, uh, we have seen that the subsampling fre frequency is reduced by 10 when only one filter is activated instead of all the five filters. Uh, as a perspective, digital down conversion stage of the universal GNSS subsampling receiver will be uh, investigated in future works. Thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you, Jihan, for sharing with us these interesting results. Maybe let's move for the question and answer session. Yes, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Just to check uh, my knowledge, what is GNSS? Global Navigation Satellite System. Okay, so here we have just communication between satellites in order to communicate the position of the persons on maybe the devices. Yes. It's okay, so uh, I don't know if uh, the free space optical can be a solution here. It's okay, communication through optical. We did if not test this uh, uh, object. Ju just I'm suggesting if it is a solution in order to do the communication between uh, the different satellites. We did not use it. Perhaps we will test this, not test the optical. Um. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this uh, presentation. I have the question about the complexity of uh, this solution. We, uh, we can see we use uh, uh, three or five filter. Yes. Uh, but uh, the complexity of uh, using simultaneously this number of filter, uh, I suppose that higher complexity. Uh, we have uh, just simulated this architecture. Now we, uh, we are in the stage of implementing the, this architecture, and uh, I cannot uh, give you the complexity of the implementation of this architecture. Uh, this is the current work, is the implementation of this uh, architecture. Uh, second question. Yes. Uh, uh, you suppose that uh, 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 your solution is uh, working in case when you have uh, the signal, the f uh, L1, L2, and uh, three signal. L5. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, 
uh, all signals, no. all GNSS signals. But in the case when you don't uh, have any uh, uh, any signals, how c can uh, the devices uh, know these and uh, this is? Uh, From the antenna, if uh, w when he received the signal, he will know uh, which signals are present. And then we'll activate uh, the, uh, the proper uh, 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 filters. But the condition of the, of the transmission condition can be changes because the mobility of the devices, uh, etc. But uh, in the case when uh, the device is not able to, to uh, receive any signals, for, for example, what can we, we do? suppose it to, to uh, always have an, uh, an input signal? Mm. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, C. Sofian. More questions, maybe? Is there any other question? Maybe, C. Mohammed, do you have any interesting question? I am pretty sure. I am asking myself why, why we need to receive all these uh, six systems at the same time. You have probably said something at the beginning, the beginning of your presentation saying that uh, you, will, uh, you will use the, the localization power of each of them and combine this, this, inf this information to have better localization probably. But uh, is it, is it, are you sure that you will be able to enhance your localization by doing so? And uh, what, what will be the consequence on uh, energy consumption? Uh, uh, since since you, here you, 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 you will have a lot of processing. Our current work is computing the energy consumption. Uh, this is the, the current work with uh, uh, the implementation of this uh, receiver. For the uh, enhancement of the, uh, the localization while using, we are uh, uh, trying to see which are the right scenarios that are uh, really needed, which are the scenarios that can uh, really enhance the position. Now it is a simulation uh, work, but we, will, uh, I, we are working to, uh, to verify the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the needed uh, scenarios. Okay. But the consumption for, for, for your terminals, uh, because normally they are, they are bat battery based. So yes. if you consume a lot of uh, energy, you will have problems with uh, your battery. Yes. And uh, probably uh, the enhancement that you are uh, uh, seeking will be less than the, 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 the consumed energy uh, yes. uh, that, that you will you'll have to add. Yes, it is correct that the conception will be uh, added, and we are trying to uh, to uh, to tr to uh, to enhance the frequ uh, the subsampling frequency uh, uh, choice and uh, 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 taking in account the conception, because in uh, in this presentation we don't take in account the co the power conception. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe another question from C. Sofian. <laughs> uh, uh, I have uh, another question about uh, uh, do you have uh, 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 do you have an idea how to ca can uh, deploy this uh, solution uh, uh, in, uh, in the platform, for example? Because you, uh, we know with the smartphone, actually, the number of a smartphone uh, is uh, more than more uh, important. And uh, uh, for example, for, uh, are you, for example, uh, investigate software way how to implement this solution via software? Or this time we are working in the implementation of this architecture through software or through hardware. We are in the step of choosing the, the uh, architecture, software based or hardware based. And uh, if it is hardware based, which hardware will be, uh, uh, will choose. And uh, hardware than uh, FPGA or. Uh, but how to deploy? it on the smartphone if, if uh, in the case of when you choose the hardware. At the end of my thesis, <laughs> I will have the okay. how to implement it in the smartphone. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, 
Sister Sophia, and maybe more questions. Is there any question? Actually, I am sorry that I am not familiar with this research area. <laughs> However, for the sake of curiosity, I have seen in your figures that the received power is around minus 200 dBm. I, uh, please, minus can you give us where? more insight about this uh, level of received power? Where in my paper? Uh, uh, in the figure as well. The, uh, you show the received input uh, power or received input spectrum. In the f figures where you plot uh, the power as a function of the frequency. You, uh, yeah, for example, in these figures. Oh, this is the, uh, the uh, GNSS uh, signal specification. The input is the GNSS signal specification. And table, uh, this is the, the, are the specification of the uh, GNSS signals. Yes, is there, uh, okay. Is there any insight? What, I, I see that the level power is so low. Am I right? Or? In this table? No, not the table, the figures. Uh, we introduced some noise. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. And uh, let's thank the candidate for her quali high quality presentation. Thanks. Maybe it's time for lunch. By this presentation, we end the cognitive radio session. And uh, good appetite for everybody. See you, see you at, uh, at, four, uh, at 14. At 14.